Welcome to Skill Cap's top picks to climb out of ELO Hell in Patch 1016. We've huddled the Skill Cap's analysts together and decided on the top three best picks for climbing on every roll, so you don't want to miss this. We've taken into account things like champion win rate, how difficult they are to play, how difficult they are to play against, and recent changes. If you want to see these guides every patch, then be sure to smash that like button and, even better, subscribe to not miss the next upload. Let's begin with our three top lane picks. First starting with Darius. Darius is such a great pick throughout all elos right now, but even stronger for low elo due to players' lack of matchup knowledge, which leads to Darius players getting a lot more kills to snowball off of early on in lane. If you can get the ball rolling with this champ early on, he's got some of the best 1v2 potential for any champion. Instead of being afraid of ganks, the more players that come to your lane for you to dunk on makes things better. Combining Ghost and Nimbus Cloak makes his weakness of being kited almost non-existent. So you can just play off your summoner spell cooldowns and go all in when they are up. You'll find yourself getting a lot of solo kills early on. To optimize your solo carry potential, make sure to rush Trinity Force. A lot of you are already doing this, which is great, but over 30% of players are still rushing Black Cleaver in the lower elos. Players who rush Trinity Force have around a 6% better win rate than those who go Black Cleaver. Conqueror is hands down the best keystone for Darius, so run it every single game and make sure to take Nimbus Cloak in your secondary runes to stick onto your opponents easier. Darius generally struggles against ranged champions who can poke him down and kite him out, so we recommend you consider banning a few champs like Vayne, Quinn, and Narn. Garen is the second top laner we would recommend for this patch. Garen is such a great pick for lower elos because his kit is so simplistic which allows for you to see a lot of success as soon as you pick him up. His synergy with Conqueror makes his dueling threat extremely strong as every single tick of his E gives him two stacks, so he quickly gets max benefit from the damage and healing the rune provides. One common mistake we see a lot of Garen players make is running Teleport instead of Ignite. Garen's Teleport flank plays are very lackluster, and combined with the fact that it's much more difficult to use effectively, we would suggest you take Ignite as it's much more consistent and will enhance your kill threat throughout the game. To back this up even further, Ignite has around a 3% better win rate than Teleport does in low elo. Conqueror will be your keystone every game, and a Trinity Force rush into Phantom Dancer and Deadmans is pretty standard for most games. Garen tends to struggle against very similar champions that Darius has problems with. He doesn't have a dash in his kit, so ranged champs like Teemo, Vayne, and Quinn would be our recommendations for banning if you are picking up the might of Demacia. Rounding out our top lane picks is Shen. After receiving a very substantial buff to his passive shield two patches ago, Shen has shadow dashed his way to being a top pick throughout every single elo bracket. His strong dueling threat combined with his map impact makes him a jack of all trades. If you get rolling with him early on, you can pressure the side lane and still have the ability to enter a fight immediately due to his ult. This makes him such a great pick because players tend to get caught out or start random fights so often in the lower ranks. So being able to join your team while the enemy top laner is stuck in the side lane can make you win games. A mechanic we would highly suggest you learn in practice tool before taking Shen into ranked is his E flash combo. This allows him to extend the range of his taunt and is very difficult for the enemy to react to. Your setup on Shen should consist of running Grasp as your keystone and Ultimate Hunter in secondary runes so you can use your ult more often. Rushing Titanic Hydra into Sunfire Cape and then whatever defensive item you need the most is the standard build for Shen. Some good bands to consider when playing Shen would be Darius, Garen, and Mordekaiser. All three of those champs are played a ton in the lower ranks, and lower elo Shen players tend to struggle with them more than any other matchup. Let's move on to breaking down our jungle picks. Fresh off her massive buff in this patch, Evelyn is now a very high priority pick if you're looking to climb. Evelyn's main weakness has always been that she gets outclassed in the early game. But with her Q cooldown being reduced from 8 to 4 seconds, it gives her so much more dueling threat, allowing her much more success in early skirmishes. With her early game becoming stronger, it makes her a much more well-rounded champion as her mid to late game is still extremely strong. Once you hit your level 6 spike, you can start to take over games. Low elo players are a lot less likely to respect your invies, which will give you a great chance to snowball and be a potent carry threat. 
One thing to keep in mind on your first few bases with Evelyn is to grab a Dark Seal if you have the extra gold. Mage Eyes is such a great item for the champ since you can find yourself getting so many stacks very easily so you want to make sure you pick up that Dark Seal as early as possible to get it stacking. Your core build will consist of Runic Echoes into Mage Eyes and then to Rabadons to really strengthen your one-shot potential. And for runes, you will want to take Electrocute. The best ban for Evelyn and even just in general for this patch would be Hecarim. After his buff, he's performing extremely well and is causing most Evelyn players a lot of trouble so far in 1016. Speaking of Hecarim, he's gonna be the second jungler on our list. The champion has received so many buffs now over the past few months that it was just a matter of time before we would see his power spike. With the buff to his E in this patch, Hecarim has been pushed over the top and has become a premier jungle pick. It's really important when ganking early on with Hecarim and just whenever you're engaging to try to use your E so that it knocks the opponent back into your team. When ganking, always try to get in behind the opponent with your E before you hit them to knock them back into your team. When ganking at level 6, you want to use your E to help you engage but don't hit the enemy with it until you ult in behind them. You only have a few different options for summoner spells and runes. Running Ghost and Face Rush makes you a deadly threat by giving you insane ganks and they synergize really nicely with their passive. The second viable setup would be running Ignite with Conqueror as your keystone. This gives you insanely good dueling potential, so if enemy lanes don't look very gankable, you can opt into this setup so you can fight the enemy jungler for early crabs or invade easier. Your build pass should consist of a Cinder Hulk Rush into Trinity Force and then Death Stance. That stance is such an underrated item at the moment and it makes him really difficult to kill once he picks it up. A few good bans if you're picking up this champ would be Master Yi and Kane. Both champions scale very well into the late game and since games tend to last longer in the lower elos, they can start to beat up on Hecarim once they get a couple of items. Okay, on to the third jungler, Ramus. He's always such a great pick for the lower ranks because he counters so many of the champions that low elo players tend to main. In the jungle, you see a ton of Lee Sin, Master Yi, and Kane. And in the mid lane, Zed and Yasuo are always the two most picked. Full AD compositions are so common in low elo and it allows Ramus to stack armor, becoming insanely tanky and still doing a ton of damage since his passive gives him AD based on his armor. His early gank potential is top tier and is very easy to execute, which makes his ability to snowball lanes really strong. A new setup we've seen emerge in the past few patches is running Ghost instead of Flash to make your early ganks even stronger. Ghost also has a much shorter cooldown than Flash does, so you can find yourself getting a lot more early kills. Flash is still completely viable, but we would recommend you try Ghost out as it does perform better by about 3% over Flash. For runes, look to run Aftershock to enhance your tankiness. Rush Cinder Hulk, Thornmail, and go towards a Righteous Glory to make your engage much more insane. Keep in mind that this build path won't be the best for every game, because if you're up against AP enemy champs, you would want to grab an Adaptive Helm or Spirit Visage as your third or fourth item. Since it's optimal for you to stack armor on Ramus, any AP champion you don't like playing against would be a good ban. Two options would be Fiddlesticks and Karthus because they're two of the most picked AP junglers right now. One more jungler we want to feature for this patch is Shivana. Although we're only mentioning three champions for all other roles, our analysts believe that all four of these junglers are so strong at the moment, so leaving one of them out just didn't seem right. The reason Shivana is a priority pick in the lower ranks is because of her strong dragon taking potential and great scaling. If you can control early dragons and focus on getting Dragon Soul, then you can solo carry games really well just by having strong objective control. We recommend you choose the AP route on Shivana in most of your games, unless your team is in dire need of AD damage. Once you hit Nasher's Tooth and Rabadons, your E in Dragon Form deals an immense amount of damage and the hitbox is very large so this just allows Shivana to carry teamfights really well. For runes on AP Shivana, look to take Dark Harvest. Since Shivana doesn't have the best gank threat early on, banning out a jungler who tends to spam gank is a good idea so you limit the chances of your team dying and give you more time to scale. Right now, Nunu and Hecarim would be good ban choices. Let's now look at three of the strongest mid laners. The first one being Annie. Annie has always been one of the best champions for you to spam if you want to learn the fundamentals of the game. She's very simple and straightforward which allows you to focus more on the macro aspects of the game. The champ was even buffed back in patch 1010 
and has held one of the highest win rates in low elo since then, sitting at around 53%. She may not be the most flashy champion or have any crazy mechanics, but if you can consistently hit your multi-man Tibber stuns in fights and look for picks on enemy squishies later on, then you will start to see your elo skyrocket faster than ever before. Look to run Electrocute as your keystone on Annie to make your one-shot even stronger. And for your build, rush Alludance Echo into either a Zonyas or Rabadons, depending on if you need the survivability from the Stasis or you want more damage from the Death Cap. Due to Annie's short range, she tends to struggle against champs who can poke her out. We suggest banning Fizz and Lux, since they're two mid laners who have long range and are played a lot in the lower ranks. The best mid laner throughout all ELOs right now is Galio, and he's our second mid laner for the patch. He's a strong laner with good shove, strong skirmish, and great roaming potential at 6, which all make him a very good solo queue pick. He's especially strong for the lower ranks since we see a lot of dive champs or melee assassins being played. 8 out of 10 of the most picked mid laners in low elo are melee, and with Galio's taunt he does such a good job at not allowing those champs to dive his backline and can lock them down very easily if they try to. If you haven't picked up the champ in a while, make sure you remember his taunt flash combo is no longer part of his kit. If you're trying to engage and see the enemy team grouped up, be sure to flash first and then channel your taunt for some massive AoE CC. For runes, Aftershock is really good, as it allows you to become really tanky while still being able to one-shot at the same time. Make sure to run Nimbus Cloak in your secondary page to help you find those flash taunt engages. For your item build, rushing a Proto Belt before building a Zonius and then Leandris is usually the best option, unless you really need the healing reduction. In which case, you go Morello. Galio doesn't have too many bad matchups as his Q allows him to farm really safely. But since his W passive gives him a magic shield, he can struggle against certain AD champions. Strong early game AD picks like Talon and Nocturne can give him trouble if he doesn't respect their kill threat, so they can be worth banning. Our third and final mid pick of the patch is Vega. Having some of the best scaling for any mid laner, being very simple to play, and possessing an amazing teamfight makes him an optimal pick for the lower ranks. Running Glacial Augment combined with building GLP and Twin Shadows gives you so much utility and zone control come the mid game. On top of that, you have your E, which makes it almost impossible for the enemy team to try to fight you in chokes. Your main objective with the champ early on should be to farm as much as possible with your Q. Stack up the AP so that once you hit the mid game, you still have the ability to one shot while providing your team with a ton of CC. Once you hit mid game, try to get vision for your team around objectives and use the strength of your setup to find picks and give your team advantages. For your setup, run Glacial Augment and make sure you take Ingenious Hunter in your secondary runes to reduce the cooldown of your GLP and Twin Shadows. Your third item can be a Zonius if you feel vulnerable to the enemy's hard engage or a death cap if you feel very confident. Vagar's main weakness is the fact that he has shorter range and doesn't have a gap closer, so assassin champions with mobility tend to do pretty well against him. For that, we recommend you ban Katarina, Zed, or Fizz. Let's take a look at the ADC role and break down our three picks. Despite her nerfs this patch, Ash still remains on top as one of the strongest AD picks. Her strong laning, great jungle tracking, and the ability to engage by herself makes her one of the best picks. She has one of the longest auto ranges in the game, and combined with the range of her W, she can win out on early trades very easily. Players tend to have very poor jungle tracking in lower elo, so with your hawk shot, you can save yourself and your team from dying to early ganks. And since players tend to miss position a lot more, you can find so many picks with your ult, making it such a game-changing ability. For runes, Take Lethal Tempo as your keystone, and approach Velocity as your secondary as it synergizes with the slows in her kit. For the build, rush Blade of the Ruined King, grab Hurricane second, and then build Infinity Edge as your third item. The only ADC worth banning this patch if you're playing Ash would be Caitlyn, as she can match your early game and scale better into the late game. We would more so suggest you lean towards banning a hard engaged support like Leona, Blitz, or Thresh as Ash doesn't have the luxury of a gap closer, which makes her vulnerable to getting caught out by CC. Ever since her buffs two patches ago, Caitlyn has been by far the strongest ADC for every single elo. Riot giving her more base AD and move speed has made her laning phase even stronger and gives her even better kiting potential. 
Because of these buffs, her win rate has spiked to 53% and her pick rate is upwards of 30%, which puts her in OP territory. She doesn't really have any glaring weaknesses at the moment as her laning phase is unmatched and she scales exceptionally well into the late game. Make sure you take advantage of her long auto range in the laning phase by attacking the enemy when they try to go for last hits. If you're playing with a CC engaged support, always save at least one trap in the laning phase so that you can combo off your teammate if they land a CC ability. Fleet Footwork is the optimal keystone for Caitlyn right now, and Presence of Mind works great as well to keep you from running into mana issues. A Stormraiser Rush into Infinity Edge and then Rapid Fire Cannon 3rd is the best build path for Kate on this patch. The only ADC who can look to contest her in the early game at the moment is Ash. So if you're looking to ban out an ADC, then we would recommend her. Other than that, there isn't a certain champ who jumps out to us as a must ban, so just ban out whoever you don't like to play against. Another ADC to receive a base AD buff is Miss Fortune, and she is the final ADC we suggest you pick up. MF is always a top tier pick for the lower ranks, due to the lack of mechanical skill required to play her. With point and click damage from her Q, which can chunk squishies to half HP, and the point and click ult that can 100 to 0 an entire enemy team in a matter of seconds, it makes her such an impactful champion who's going to provide a lot more than other ADCs in most circumstances. Her synergy with hard engage supports who statistically are played more often in the lower ranks gives her even more kill potential early on in lane and makes her potential at level 6 much more insane. Look to run press the attack as your keystone rune and grab overheal and bloodline as well to give yourself some sustain. Build as many AD items as possible. Rush an Essence Reaver, grab an IE second, and then a Bloodthirster third. The best bans for MF are hard engage or dive champs, so banning out a support like Blitz or Thresh or a mid lane assassin like Zed or Talon would be ideal. And then to round it all out, let's break down our three support picks, starting with Swain. Swain's got some really nice buffs a few patches back, and it's made him an extremely good support pick to climb with. His pick potential and all-in threat with his E makes him exceptionally good for the lower ranks because players will miss position a ton early on in lane. To make it so that the hit rate of your E becomes almost perfect, watch for when one of your minions get low. When the enemy ADC goes for the last hit, throw your E out and snag them. When autoing minions, your character is forced into a fixed position for a brief second, so this gives you time to catch them out every single time. Swain's innate tankiness from his ult also makes him a great low elo pick, since he can team fight well and provide a really nice frontline for his team. Run Electrocute as your keystone rune, and make sure to take perfect timing as secondary rune, since the stasis effect is very strong on Swain. For his build, rush a Leandris, build Zonia second, and then buy Morello if you need the healing reduction, or a Rhylice if you don't. Champions that can negate Swain's all-in threat are the ones you should consider banning, with the best ones at the moment being Morgana and Lulu. Another great carry support option is Brand. He doesn't have the same kind of pick potential that Swain does, but his poke and AoE damage output is what makes him a pick we recommend. You don't want to have to rely on your ADC to carry you in the lower ranks. If you play a damage-oriented support like Brand, then even if your ADC is not the brightest, you still give yourself a really good chance to win games. Your point-and-click AoE ult gives you such a strong team fight, and it's so much more effective in the lower ranks because players tend to bunch up and not think about these kind of AoE abilities as much. Your passive provides you with percent HP damage, and by rushing Leandris, it allows Bran to melt through objectives surprisingly fast. So if you can control vision around Baron, you can sneak a free one when the enemies least expect it. For runes, take Dark Harvest as you can accumulate a lot of stacks really fast due to your poke. After the Leandris rush we mentioned, look to pick up a Ryali second, and then get Zonius, Void Staff, or Morello third, depending on which one you need the most. Being a squishy mage without a dash, Brand's main weakness is getting caught out by CC picks or being hard engaged on. To try to combat this weakness, look to ban out a support like Blitz, Leona, or Thresh, so you can have a much easier time setting your enemies on fire. Following the previous two, our final support pick is Zyra. Zyra is another really good carry support pick for the lower ranks, because like Brandon Swain, she has a really strong laning phase with the poke potential from her plants, and her ability to 100 to 0 the enemy ADC at level 6 is arguably the best for any support in the game. She's even better in the current meta as well. We're seeing a lot of Ash being played, 
and the level 6 combo that Duo has is a free kill every time they have ults. Even Caitlyn and MF are great paired up with her, as they provide so much pressure early on. Like Brand, Zyra also has really good objective taking potential, as she builds Leandries, and her plants can tank shots from Dragon and Baron, so keep this in mind when you hit the mid game. When you check damage charts with a Zyra on your team, it's a rarity that she won't be topping the charts. So if you want to increase your chances of being able to carry your boosted ADCs, then look to pick her up. You're gonna want to run Comet as your keystone rune to make your early laning phase much stronger, and then go towards the exact same build as Bran by building Leandris and Rylice, and then a situational item from there on. Some good bans for Zyra would also be identical to what Bran struggles against, so champs like Blitz, Thresh, and Leona are great bans for her as well. Alright guys, that's going to wrap things up. Let us know if you think there was an even better pick than the ones we've listed for any of the roles in this guide. Also, remember to sign up to Skill Caps for guides that teach you how to truly become a better player. It is the best place to be if you're serious about improving at League of Legends, and our improvement money back guarantee when actively using Skill Cap means there's no risk. So check us out. Thanks for watching.